Hello, my name is Callie Edgren, and I'm the Director of Regulatory Experts at Ascent, a member of the Association of Equipment Manufacturers, or AEM. By now, you should have received a request from your customer, who is a member of AEM, to provide you with information regarding the presence of certain chemicals in the products you sell. This video will provide you with an overview of the request, the substances, and the regulations driving this activity. PFAS is an acronym that stands for per and polyfluoral alkyl substances. This is a family of over 12,000 synthetic chemicals that have been used for multiple purposes since the 1940s. By design, they have very tight carbon fluorine bonds, the strongest in organic chemistry, that provides many desirable material properties. These tight bonds also make it very difficult for these chemicals to break down, which can be useful as durable materials, but can create concerns of their persistence in the environment, as well as in humans and animals who ingest them. This difficulty in breaking down has resulted in the nickname Forever Chemicals. PFAS are used in a wide range of applications because they provide so many desirable material properties. They are often used for applications such as thermal and electrical insulation, flame retardants, and low friction in both materials and processes. Fluorinated coatings are also often used to provide waterproofing, stain resistance, and packaging protection, just to name a few. Oftentimes, product designers are familiar with common brand names of PFAS chemicals, such as Teflon, Gore-Tex, or Viton. When trying to find PFAS in your products or processes, it may be helpful to share these common brands with your product engineers to identify where these substances may exist. There are also a number of free resources available to companies to help identify where PFAS may be present in their materials. You can see that the common PFAS uses are really quite broad. When you include commodities like electronics and batteries or refrigerants or paints, it becomes difficult to exclude any specific industries from being potentially impacted by growing regulations and concerns about these substances. So let's talk for a moment about some of the big regulatory drivers that are emerging around this family of chemicals. Many individual PFAS chemicals, such as PFOA, which was the subject of the Hollywood movie Dark Waters, are already restricted by numerous regulations. This chart shows just a few examples of specific PFAS chemicals, the regulations that control them. But because many new PFAS have been developed to replace the old PFAS, like Gen X replaced PFOA, regulators are starting to change the way that they approach these restrictions. One regulation that industry is watching carefully is the European Union REACH regulation. NX17 of REACH restricts the use of certain chemicals. Earlier this year, a proposal to restrict all PFAS chemicals was made and is currently under consideration. This means that by a certain date, companies may not be able to sell products containing PFAS chemicals in the EU. This could have a major impact on companies' abilities to access EU markets with their products, as well as to continue supporting their operations within the EU. This proposal has two different options. Option one would be for a full band with a limited number of derogations or exemptions and extensions to the restriction, where option two would have a few more allowances, a longer timeline for enforcement, and may allow longer transition for specific uses. The next step of the restriction process under REACH allows for comments to be submitted for any new proposals, and it's the desire of AEM and its members to submit comments on where PFAS are used and why some of those uses are critical and therefore should be excluded from future restrictions. But AEM cannot create these comments without information from suppliers on where and why the substances are being used. In the United States, there are also numerous regulatory activities taking place to restrict or control PFAS chemicals. The US EPA is just one federal agency with multiple actions around PFAS taking place. 
One activity that industry is closely watching involves the Toxic Substances Control Act, or TSCA, and a proposed requirement for manufacturers, including those who import PFAS in the form of an article, to report specific data, including which chemicals are used, in what concentration, for what purpose, and total volume per year going back to 2011. This will require most companies who operate in the US, including selling imported products, to report these details. Perhaps even more aggressively, the individual US states are currently creating new regulations that mandate reporting, controls, or even heavy restrictions, both on manufacturers within their states, as well as the sales of products into their states, which contain PFAS. Just like in the EU, AEM members may have opportunities to work with regulators to understand where uses of PFAS are critical and the regulatory restrictions that may need to allow for exemptions. Finally, while regulations themselves can be significant drivers, there are actually many other forces around the use of PFAS that all manufacturers should be aware of. Every company should be working to identify where PFAS exists in their supply chains in order to not only comply with legal regulations, but to head off some of these other forces. For example, it's difficult to manufacture products that contain PFAS, even if a regulation provides an exemption, if suppliers no longer manufacture the chemicals. In December of 2022, 3M, one of the world's largest manufacturers of PFAS chemicals, announced that they will discontinue all PFAS products by the end of 2025. This could have a tremendous impact, not only on your ability to manufacture and sell products that rely on those chemicals, but it may even impact your ability to maintain machinery in your factories or to provide uh, personal protective equipment to your employees. Another key driver that many companies are now experiencing is pressure from their liability insurers. We're starting to demand that their clients certify they are PFAS free or else risk new exclusions being added to their policies or even the loss of their policy altogether. Insurers are concerned that PFAS are the next asbestos and want to ensure they're not going to have to cover the costs of future litigation and cleanup. Many other forces are also driving suppliers and manufacturers to eliminate PFAS. You can see that this is not just an issue for your AEM customers themselves. Identifying where you are using PFAS in both your processes and products is essential for you to understand where your business risks are growing so you can adequately address them. For your customers who are AEM members, they want to understand how and why PFAS are used in the materials they purchase from you. They would like you to provide them with information about the composition of the materials that you provide, specifically whether or not these contain PFAS chemicals. Your response is requested by August 1st because comments to the European Union are due in September. This information will give them the knowledge they need to engage with regulators to share information on critical uses that should be protected in the regulations, and also so they can address many of the other risks that PFAS are creating for manufacturers. Thank you so much for your support of your AEM customers and manufacturing.